Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, Shane here from Vulgar Display Gaming, and welcome to our new comic book podcast where we're going to talk about uh, our favorite issues of the month, new issues coming out next month, as well as uh, whatever we want to talk about. And today I'm joined by Jeff from Jeffrey Comics and Mike, who is a comic book writer who has written stuff like uh, for Mr. Bungle and the Faith No More comic. And much more stuff. So, gentlemen, I'll let you introduce yourselves because I can't do it myself. So, Jeff, start with you. Let me know what brought you into everything. <laughs> hey, I'm Jeff, owner of Jeffrey's Comics, and, and definitely what brought me into comic books was my dad, Jeff Sr. Uh, he loved comic books so much that he opened a comic book store before I was even born. And so I very much grew up at the comic book store, reading everything there is to read and just nerding out over every little thing that you can nerd out over. So uh, I'm really happy to be here and talk comics with you guys every month. Mike? Hey, my name is Mike. Uh, hi, guys and gals. Uh, I'm a lifetime through and through comic book fan uh, ever since I was a wee lad back in the 1970s. Uh, moved to California in 1997. I met uh, Jeffrey's dad, Jeffrey Sr. Not too long after that became my first paying job here in California. Uh, and that evolved into many different comic shops and I've come full circle. I uh, worked at Jeffrey's Comics the last few months that it was a, a brick and mortar and I am a proud full customer at Jeffrey's at the pop-ups at a collector legion that's where i met you shane and here we are <laughs> and for me uh my name is shane and the reason i start all of this is because of jeff from jeffrey's comics because i remember the first day i wanted to get back into comics a buddy suggested to me to go to jeffrey's comics and i was like all right cool i'll go there and i walked in and i met jeff and i was like hey i'm just getting back into comics i used to be into it a long long time ago and i swear he introduced me to so many books like i bought the dark knight frank miller's dark knight i bought you know long halloween like i'm a huge batman fan he introduced me to all the classic batman titles and like i went on this whole spree where he just got gave me the best uh graphic novels and like I spent at least two hundred fifty bucks that first day I walked into Jeffrey's Comics, and I, I I started a pull, and I've had a pull for I think almost like I think at least eight or nine years now, wow. you know. What's up? That's why we're here. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, me uh, to uh, check out my uh, YouTube channel that's called Jeffrey's Comics. Yes. The and it's all about the best stuff. It's basically my spiel when someone comes in and says, "Hey." I like Batman. I have nothing. I was like, oh, well, you got to get this, and, one, and this one and this one and this one. Exactly. And he said, hey, pull this, pull this, pull this, pull this, pull this. And again, this whole podcast, this whole kind of thing is dedicated to the, um, how do you say, like uh, our passion to comics. To the, the culture. Arts. Yes. The writing of it, the art, the pop culture, the whole thing for it. And I hope that we can introduce you all to new comics, to new things, uh, to all these things, to, to fill in the background lore of like, oh, I watched this movie and like, no, 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 here, here's what the comics that started that movie or that started that TV show, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I hope we can do. And we want to tell you about the new comics coming about this month, as well as our favorite books for this month. So we're going to start off with that. Uh, Jeff, tell me where your favorite books were this month. Oh, my absolute favorite books. I've got two. There's two titles that I'm reading every month that are just heads and shoulders above every other comic book coming out there. And that's Transformers and Ultimate Spider-Man. Yes, those books are phenomenal. Uh, I still have yet to catch up on uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, but I'm pulling it up right here. Check this out. Yeah, I... Uh... What is it so far? Three issues in? Three issues. Here's the, yes. My favorite variant for issue number three has the, the Mary Jane billboard with Spidey. Absolutely oh, beautiful. Parts. I love that cover. Absolutely beautiful. As well as uh, Transformers, I'm... <laughs> give you something on this. Jeff, I think I'm missing issue... I think, 
I have one, two, and three. I think I'm missing. I'm missing four. Actually, I have five and six. Then I got four for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, but no, the entire new line of the Hasbro series, the Energon universe, with uh, Duke, Cobra Commander, and Transformers, is absolutely phenomenal because Image took it over, and you have a more adult-oriented uh, Hasbro comic book series, which is amazing. Elaborate on your best uh, take on like how do you how do you well, think? I, I think you got to give a lot of credit to Robert Kirkman because he kind of shepherded. I don't think image makes that deal without robert kirkman i think the deal is more with robert kirkman than it is with image comics uh and the guy's just been so ridiculously successful at everything he's touched it's the creator of walking dead and the creator of invincible which is now launching into its show the amazon shows too that's another thing we gotta talk about but oh um quick sidetrack on that though i completely forgot about this how do you think uh everything's going with robert kirkman because i know i think it was the uh not co-creator or one of the artists of invincible trying to like counter like sue him or something for hey, rights to that walking, that happened with walking dead really also happened with invincible yeah that's what i'm okay. saying like was that something new i hadn't heard about that recently yeah. i know about the walking dead one but this is a quick sidetrack though because i completely yeah. forgot about that i know like robert kirkman is a huge icon in the industry but now he has all these kind of like side issues popping up do you think that's going to affect any of this stuff i don't think so and, and i mean he, even if those guys have some legal footing i i wouldn't know enough to comment one way or the other uh it, you, the the big dog gets a target on their back. Like if he wasn't making money hand over fist and being just ridiculously successful at all of this stuff, there wouldn't be any money to sue for. Exactly. But because exactly. Walking Dead became the most successful comic book franchise possibly ever. Um, and, uh, yeah. There's a big pile of money and yeah. people <laughs> feel like they deserve a portion of that pile of money. And the same thing's happening with Invincible. It seems like Amazon is very happy with the success of the show. It's great. It's a just a pitch-perfect adaptation of the comic book. And, like, all of the things that it changes are things that needed to be changed, things that didn't age great, and they fix those problems without changing any part of, of the plot that you would not want to see changed. Uh, it's just been like i said he's been so successful at all of this stuff that he's touched like walking dead is getting its spin-off show now how many spin-off shows have there been though like five or six <laughs> aren't there <laughs> but there's another one that's another pile of money what, what, yeah. what other one there's i know there's dead city there's the ones that left behind was that the, that's the newest one right yeah doesn't, that's, that's, doesn't uh norman reed just have one yeah yeah that, he has the one is in france or something yeah it's that one that's the newest yeah. one yeah Okay, got it. I always tell aspiring creators that, uh, you know, when it comes to legal stuff, they'll be fine as long as they're not successful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you're successful, then, then the problems, you know, I mean, different problems start. But it's always good, uh, you know, like, if I could go back in time and tell Mr. Kirkman and anybody who collaborates with him, get everything in writing up front uh, before the money starts getting made, you know? Because uh, once the money is there, it's like yeah, uh, then you're fighting over it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially when it multiple TV shows, oh, yeah. movies, yeah. merchandise, all that gets involved. Ooh, ooh, you're you're in trouble. I mean, that's day. that's where the money is too. So. I wish I had those problems, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll fight those I, legal battles uh, for for the other side of it. Uh, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. bringing it back to to the inner John universe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that Kirkman really wanted this, yeah, uh, because it was kind of well known that the Hasbro line, uh, uh, the rights to publish the comic books were going to lapse. Mm. Um, and at IDW, it, it had been think? at IDW for yeah. so long, yeah, so long, like at least a decade. It would yeah. be being published at IDW. And they kept not having an announcement that they picked it up again. And people noticed that. And they're like, oh, that means something. That they haven't made an announcement that they're getting it back. Oh, and they're saying this is the last issue of the series. And they haven't announced a relaunch. 
and people kind of put put the dots together and realized that IDW was going to lose the publishing right, rights yeah. of these titles. And then it was kind of kept secret and hush hush who actually got the rights. And I think that Robert Kirkman is uh, maybe alongside Todd McFarlane is the only person who could navigate a deal like that. And, mm -hmm. and he did it. And then he launched it with Void Rivals, which was uh, amazing. Amazing. It was also top secret. Like Robert mm -hmm. Kirkman really values that page turn, that cliffhanger ending, because he did that multiple times. He did that with the last issue of Walking Dead. That yeah, was it was a, supposed to be. Nobody knew that it was, was the a, last it was, issue. It was advertised as a normal issue, yeah. and then they solicited three issues pass. They, yeah. yeah, they made fake. They, they made the, the fake cover. They double shipped it to all of us stores so that we would have more copies. And then they dropped the news that day. Like, it wasn't even two days before. It was Wednesday, New Comic Book Day, where they were like, yep, that's the last issue. And so everybody was running in to get a copy of it. And, and he tr tried the same thing with Void Rivals because he was like, you guys need to be buying Void Rivals, but we're not going to tell you why. And then they had a, a secret phone call that I was actually a part of. And it was about why that we why should we should be buying void rivals and it was he announced the energon universe to us comic store owners and at that point whether it was successful or not i was really impressed with how much he was trying to work with comic book stores because i have to say without getting into it too much marvel and dc do not do that and so that somebody would do that really meant a lot to me and so I was like, I'm going to order a few extra copies just because of that, because he took us serious as a partner in this endeavor with him. And then, of course, you read that first issue and it's got Jetfire. Like, Jetfire. <laughs> one of my five favorite Transformers of love Jetfire. And so for it to be him that showed up was just so cool. And to just kind of go down the review on, on that book, uh, it's it's bringing its own new sci-fi story. It doesn't star the Transformers. It stars these new characters that Robert owns, and but like it takes place with the backdrop of Transformers being part of the same universe. And they show Jetfire transforming, and it's got the best sound effect for the transformation. Like it, it's <laughs> long and skinny and has to fit on the page sideways, and it's like. And just perfect and, and you could see that it was just designed with so much love and I'm sure they spent as much time on that sound effect as any other part of the comic book and they just killed it they made it perfect and after that I was like oh okay let's see where this goes but when it really made me like do my holy shit this is what well, what is this this is amazing I was Transformers number one, the first issue. I am a Transformers fiend, if you can. That's I can tell. I can tell. That's just Blaster and Soundwave. That's only <laughs> two characters. Uh, I love Transformers, and I've never been that excited or impressed with the comic book. <laughs> it's just never done it for me. So that's I was like, a, okay. That's the same thing. IDW, I don't think they, uh, I don't I don't know, nothing did it for me either. Same with like the Magic comics. I'm a huge yeah. Magic fan. I, I was like, ugh. That's the next thing I want to see. Get I hope image. image takes that too. That would be Yeah, that awesome. would be amazing because Magic I deserves. hope they take the entire Hasbro line. Yeah. That would be sweet. Yeah, magic deserves better comic books. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Uh, but, but like cards Max in it. Right. Oh my God! Don't don't get me started. Because I talked to them and I was like, "Look, you guys need to do whatever you need to do to put a card <laughs> in this, because the most successful, I, it would if you had a card in this comic book, I'd order fifty copies. That that's but you don't have a card in it, so I'm ordering five. That's and the thing. If Magic were to put out promo cards or like they've whatever done it, plain, that, but they yeah. Not, yeah, but, but they, they need to very do it, like, rarely do it, like, they did it. They need to do it where, like, say a, a store Planeswalker like, comic with the card in it. That'd be sweet. Run mic on. Run yes. mic on. Oh, yeah. so, yeah, so a store <laughs> like twenty-five copies of it, 
like one of those 25 is some whatever not a black lotus obviously but you know like an incentive card uh, to history lane here uh way back in the olden times in the mid 90s they did a comic book adaptation of fallen empires which was like the fourth or fifth expansion series for magic and they put a pack of fallen empires in Whoa. the bank with the comic book so you mm -hmm. find those comic books still sealed it's got a fresh damn pack of that set and mm. but that but that's not even what i want because people can go buy the packs of the set that's not gonna sell that many extra. no but a promo card to the cover I, idw did one run where every issue had a promo card of a magic card none of like the crazy valuable ones i get yeah. that we have to worry about the collectible economy of it but playable cards cards you would want to play and they had the the comic book artist do it with the character from the comic book in the image and all of those are collector items now they're not lighting the world on fire but five ten fifteen yeah. bucks for the for the single card yeah. and that's they they have a perfect blueprint of what to do to make it successful and some something is preventing them i'm sure it's some legal bullshit that shouldn't be a problem but it is I mean, that's what I'm saying. I hope um, Image gets uh, the Magic the Gathering line as well, because that's all Hasbro stuff. They, hey, even He-Man would be sweet. Give me an adult-oriented He-Man comic. That would be awesome. Yeah. You know? But anyway, uh, Mike, what have you been reading this month? Oh, man. Well, uh, let's see. I got a few. Um, I read some just for the show today. Uh, recent books I've picked up the last week or so. Uh, the Goon is back um, from Dark Horse. So Goon's been around, I believe, for 25 years. This is number one of a new series. So if you're curious about The Goon, uh, this is a good jumping on point. I did a little research. It looks like it's sold out most places. Yeah, that's something I wanted to check out. but I'm sorry. Yeah, but this storyline <laughs> is called Them That Don't Stay Dead. And uh, basically, The Goon lives in this like necropolis kind of place with a bunch of zombies and and uh and one of his buddies is a guy named spider and he's actually a spider and spider's wife hates him and <laughs> you know so it's 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 like uh cheers meets uh night of the living dead um and uh so this issue there's it, they don't really call them magas but there's like a, a maga gathering and a, these vampires go and bite them and so you got these like <laughs> uh racist uh vampires <laughs> Racist yeah, that's right. You're not a vampire. You can't yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's that, and and there's a femme fatale involved in this, and I won't say much more than that. Um, then you know, th there's as with most goon storylines, there's revenge, and there's you know a bit of a white trash element to it all. That's fun, uh, which segues into the next book I bought, which is. It's funny, I read three books today, and each one had an element of the previous in the next. And what I mean is, so this book is called Golgotha Motor Mountain. Oh, I wanted to check that out. I yeah, saw and this stuff. is uh, Robbie Rodriguez, was who, did my, uh, who did my wedding portrait, but he's the really? creator of Spider-Gwen. Yeah, I'll have to send you a picture of that so you can yeah. show you, but uh, he's a good friend of mine. And... Um, uh, before he created Spider Gwen, he and I have been buddies, and we did a comic book together too. Um, but this is his new book, and he didn't write it; he drew it. And he sometimes Robbie draws a book, and you can tell he's kind of rushing it. And then sometimes he just gives a hundred percent. It looks great from the cover. This is one where he's giving it everything he's got. I, I think uh, I would say the art is a little bit better than the story in this, and but. This also is very white trash. It's about these two brothers who uh, I think they kind of sell crystal meth in the post-apocalyptic uh, future. They're making so meth <laughs> still exists, you know. After oh, the, yeah, in the Mad but Max this, universe, this asteroid falls in into their uh, into their uh, they they find an asteroid and they start selling pieces of this asteroid as a drug and and <laughs> it just insanity and hilarity ensues. Nice. So. You've got the white trash from Nagoon going into the white trash of Golgotha, nice. going into the post-nuke of 
Napalm Lullaby. Yes, yes, yes. So, I've been reading that as well. Yeah, I yeah. Haven't finished it yet. As we were starting this call, I was like, I'm still reading this. Hold That's on. Let me okay. read the letter you so I understand. I'll tell you this. Yeah. Uh, so this is written by my favorite writer, Rick Remender. Uh, Rick Remender has created Fear Agent, Deadly Class. Uh, Deadly Class is cool. Deadly Class is great. What else was coming out? Oh, Black Science. Uh, so many great books. Black and Science got, great. Uh, a lot seven of Dark and Horse half, stuff, uh, and now he's writing for After Image. Eternity? Oh, oh Seven to Eternity. Or Seven seven and Guest Eternity? Seven two. No, I think Eternity. two. Yes. Yeah, seven that, was a great, that was a great That was a great book, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, he works with good artists, really. Yes. And, and this is one of my favorite artists. This, they did a book called uh, Death or Glory. Uh, Rick Remender and, and this artist who goes by only the name of Bengal. And you can see in the artwork, it's very kinetic. Uh, the artwork is phenomenal. That's yeah. why I picked up the book. It really pulled me yeah. in. Uh, yeah. The writing and the art really pulled me in on that one. Wait, um, it's hard to see where the book is going from the first issue. Um, yeah. But uh, the, like I said, that little backup piece in the back. And, um, it helps tie in the story and under, you understand a little bit more. I, I, I have a feeling that we will be selling that as a trade. Like the, that probably storyline is going to have more revelations. He mentions it in the letter in the next mm -hmm. couple of issues that he didn't want ruined. Yeah. Right. So I feel like that's gonna, people are going to want to go backwards and catch up once that trade comes out. So Absolutely. I was going to say, like you mentioned, Remender, did he write stuff for Dark Horse? Well, like you said, Black Science and everything. And, uh, Black Science was Image. He did Fear Agent. Was Fear at Agent. Image and Dark Horse. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. um, Fear Agent is something, that that something did. special, man. Fear Agent is so good. Yeah. yeah, Fury is just my favorite comic of all time. Now, here's a fun fact about Rick Remender. Uh, he's never had a book canceled, okay? Ooh. No book has ever ended prematurely. Uh, and no matter how successful a book is, when it's over, it's over. Like, Deadly Class hey. ended at the height of its popularity, and it was that's, just... That's great. I over. love it when they do that. Don't drag shit on. Just end it. He always it. knows where it's going, and uh, it's always a complete, you know... Like if you look in the back of the of the Napalm Lullaby, look in the back of that book. There's a catalog of all his back material, his library, and there's these omnibus and these hardcovers and these trade paperbacks that collect all of his stories. Um, and there's always a beginning, middle, and end. And and I, I love that about his stuff. You know, you just know. <laughs> Jeffrey, was somebody gonna say something? Yeah, the end of Seven to Eternity is. Oh man, that that was really something special. Uh, getting yeah, I, I honestly from that storyline. Wow, I loved Seven to Eternity, but I think I was like a few issues away from finishing right they, before it, they got you know finished. It, and it, 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 there, it was it, like, oh shit, that was something that was on my pull list, but I was loved going in and I pulled it myself, and I never put it on the pull list. So mm. I need to figure out what issue you need I'm to pick up the in. last trade or yes, buy I need the, the omnibus. Trade. That's the whole thing. I need the trade because, because I know there is a yeah the swerve. Yes, I know the, the state, father the, made the, the promise to minimize it as po as much as possible. There is a yeah. huge swerve. Yeah, at so the don't end don't that spoil that for me because I didn't. No, I won't this. say anything. Else or he was like pulling the double agent kind of thing. He's like, oh, I heard the promise. You know, he's like, no. Okay, I just like as I was reading it, I was like, wait, no way, they're not doing this. And I kept reading it, and they kept doing it. <laughs> uh, what else are you reading, Mike? So my pick hit of the week, and maybe the greatest comic I've read in about a year, is this. Whoa. Mm -hmm. New Batman Dark, Dark Age. Age. I read this today, and I was like, holy crap. So uh, they did, uh, Mike Allred and Mark Russell did a... Uh, <laughs> And I haven't read it, but I have it. Superman Space Age. And this made me want to go read Space Age. But what they did with Batman's origin, I mean, it sits on all kinds of levels. Uh, and I don't want to spoil much, but you see Batman at every phase of his life in this, in this book. And, you know, it's not Dark Knight Returns for sure, but it, it's like Dark Knight that makes absolutely more sense. <laughs> that, like this is like how he would kind of wind up um yeah and that's all i'll say about that but then also i mean what this doesn't really give away too much but you know let, let's face it man if you're bruce wayne and your parents are murdered um and you inherit 
millions, maybe billions of dollars, you're probably not going to travel around the world and learn from monks on the top of the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> you're going to party, you know. Yeah. And that, and you're going to be a bit of a rebel, and and that's this Bruce Wayne when he's young. Uh, we don't see a whole lot of him as Batman in the first issue, but I have a feeling you're going to. And then there's all the you know scumbag business politics of Wayne Enterprises that happens after uh, the founder of Wayne Enterprises is gone and Bruce Wayne is too young to Take inherit and run the company, you know? So it's, it's, it's great. Have, did you get that one, Shane? No, I thought I did. That's why I briefly looked over my stack. I oh, I did, you need I that did. book, dude. But it's so no, good. That, that sells me on it too, because you got to think it's just like, I always, like, I loved Batman because he was just a normal human. He's like, ah, oh, he's got a lot of money. He was, he was, you know, Marvel's, or he was DC's answer to Iron Man, you know, pretty much. Like, oh, mm-hmm. millions of dollars, he's going to be a superhero. Normal guy. But, yeah, but I'm like, but there's no party aspect to him, really. Like, Iron Man had his party kind of phase, you know? But I'm mm-hmm. like, Batman, like, come on, you, you, you didn't think he was going to party in his early 20s? Like, he was like, fuck, I need to drown out my parents dying. Going to party, you know? right. like Good. I'm gonna fuck. I'm gone, you know. Alfred, yeah. I'll see you later. You and know, Alfred, or Alfred come bless with his me. heart, man. Alfred's doing yeah. his best to raise him right and protect him. Alfred, you know, has never been a parent, Alfred's you know? handing the condoms. Like here you go. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> always bailing him out of jail, literally in this book. Yeah, right. Um, like like God, you just you really on. see Bruce Wayne dealing with that trauma in a much more real world yeah. way than oh uh, yeah i'm gonna go tr- train with houdini to and learn how to that's... escape locks and then i'm gonna yeah. go train with the monks to, to survive pain and then i'm gonna go train <laughs> with this to do that it's very much a kid who does not know what to do Just like, yeah, I, I, let's say, Bat- yeah batman's one of my favorite superheroes but i feel like like there needed to be more grounded situation. Like, no, the motherfucker ain't gonna like start like I am on the righteous path all of a sudden. No, he's gonna like I need to drown my sorrows and a yeah. more you know in a more realistic. And that's not all way. this book is about either. But yeah, no, it, I like, mean, there's that. You get what and I'm then, saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, yeah, no, for sure. But I'm saying that yeah, there's there's a lot. Um, and then there's I I don't have this in my stack, but Batman Gargoyles really cool too uh, by Raphael. I actually Grant. have like that three. book. Yeah. 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 There's three Batman books coming out dealing with the origins of Batman. Uh, this one, Gargoyle, and then this is fucking so boring. <laughs> I want to check that out. Thank you for yeah. saving me from that. Well, you can still check it. I'm still going to get all of them. Cause the I'll borrow right. yours. How's that? You can borrow mine. <laughs> yeah. But, but it is, is dull. I mean, maybe because I read Dark Age first and I read them the same day. But I, I couldn't keep my eyes open. I was like, man, I, you know, and I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I love Batman so much, and I love a lot of these bigger heroes. But I feel like when DC just makes, like, all right, we're going to make 15 Batman books at the same time. Like, you're Too much. Right. 15 is lowballing it. But yeah, you yeah. know, there's more than 15. But, like, I just, there... I think in my pull, I have Detective Comics and just the main Batman line, and mm. I think I just pull whatever it, other Batman comics I want, but there's so many. There was a point right at the end of COVID, right post-COVID, where if you counted, like, the tie-in characters, there were 40 Batman books coming mm. out. Yeah, like 70% saying. of the DC it line. Was like, it was like 80 or 90%. There were like <clears throat> eight books that didn't I know, it have was a Batman ridiculous. character. It's like, why did there need to be this many Batman books? You had every single character had their own line. I'm like, I can't read all of this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But those were the books uh, that... Um, I, I, there's an artist I want to talk about, but we can make... I don't know if you want to save that for another segment. Or... No, 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 no. Talk about it real quick, or do you want me to uh, go through Why don't my... you tell us about what you like, dude? Okay, okay so... Again, what we're talking about is books we read this month. It doesn't have to be new books. Stuff we read this month because I'm okay. reading something very old. Uh, this <laughs> came out because I didn't know Mike also had this with the uh, <laughs> actual. He had the hard 
cover edition of this comic. This was the Anthrax um, Z2 Comics put out a book about Among the Living, and mm-hmm. each track of the album is a separate story in this graphic novel, and it's simply phenomenal. You had Greg, Greg Nicotero did uh, the new... Uh, how do you say a uh, front man like uh, logo? Not man. The not man. Yeah. The not man for uh, anthrax, which was awesome. You have a, a, a new judge dread comic in here. Some of the artists in here, you got well, Greg, Greg McTaro, JG Jones, Eric Powell, uh, some of the writers. You had, you know, Brian Poston, good comic, uh, Scott Kobush, Jared way, Mikey way, like, there's a bunch of people involved in here. Yeah, shit, you even had Corey Taylor uh, wrote a story. Rob Zombie wrote a story. Eric Rodriguez. Uh, Sable Nelson. There's just so many people involved in the making of this book. And it's simply a phenomenal comic. If you're an Anthrax fan, uh, definitely pick it up. Because it also came up with uh, the vinyl with a special edition uh, picture disc on it. Um, let me see your uh, hardcover again, because you had. Oh, you want to see the hardcover? Yeah, and it came with the, you know, the new Not Man designed yeah. by Greg Dictarian. Yeah, this is the hardcover. That is the way cooler hardcover. I'm living, and it, oh wait, I didn't show you this, dude. It's got um art prints in there too. Uh, That's awesome. I think these are the various covers. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to figure out yeah. how to do this. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a big Anthrax fan, and, and I'm a big Eric Powell fan, which is the main reason yeah. that Eric Powell is the creator of the Goon. Uh, so there's a tie in there, and uh, I don't think I had Among the Living on vinyl when I got this, so it was like a win win win. I didn't either, and I was like, Whoa, I got a graphic novel and a vinyl. It's Who's your favorite Anthrax up? singer? You, you, I, I like what? John Bush personally, but I, I like I, both. Well, I, I've seen John Bush and I've seen Joey Belladonna. So I like Joey okay. Belladonna, you know, better. Well, he's I the classic he's guy, definitely. Yeah. And I, I'm a huge Armored Saint fan as well. So. Oh, me too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But anyway, moving on, that I thought that was a cool, cool crossover from heavy metal and comic books where you had a bunch of creators and a bunch of artists doing a bunch of stuff. Z2 Comics, I think, is putting out some great stuff. They put out a they bunch do. more stuff. I gotta look more into their stuff, but it's simply phenomenal. Um, something else I picked up was the, uh, I guess this is a little bit older. I forget when this first issue came out, but it's the uh, Justice League versus Godzilla versus King Kong. Um, this is the uh, special edition. Um, you know, it roars when you open it up. Can you make it roar for us? Yes, I will make it. I might make it roar. I did open it because I I've never seen one open. Yeah. Yeah, everybody else didn't want to open it. I was like, I'm opening mine. What the fuck? Yeah, you did it like a man. But I did not know this was a $15 comic. Oops. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sound don't come cheap, man. Right? Is you it going to roar? Hear that? No, I'm not hearing anything. Can you hear it? Uh, you can't hear it. Is that micro? The microphone must not be working. Is it? Can you hear it, Kane? Anyway, maybe I'll have to record that separately. But it's like, yeah, refund. Hey. No, we don't hear it. No. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. It's very. So I can hear it, but it's very low here. That sounds like the audience in a screening of Madam Web. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it roars. Maybe I'll, I'll sample it, but uh, the cover's kind of yeah. Cool, you know, oh, that's a cool cover. I like that cool cover. Um, I'll put that. That's a first printing, right, Jeffrey? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. It's a fun, silly book. Yeah, and, and definitely yeah. is. It's kind of wonky. I was like, this is fucking wonky. And there's no <laughs> other Justice League comics coming out right now either. <laughs> it's uh, the main Justice League title. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> But other than that, um, you know, Napalm Lullaby, really cool. Didn't finish it yet because when we were on, I was talking about it. I read the letter to the back. Um, this is something cool, yet I still have to read. I only read a little bit because 
I was just trying to like go through everything. Uh, Feral. Mm. I still have yet to read Stray Dogs. Um, that I'm regretting so much. If you can oh, you gotta read that first, I think. You need a trade for that, or if there are trades. There are, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. please, please, please. But I absolutely adore this so far. It's the uh, continuation of uh, Stray Dogs, but now it's a uh, zombie apocalypse. You know, it takes place of that. It's like almost like, you even describe it. Did you guys ever watch the old school movie Watership Down, where it's like mm -hmm. violent animals and everything? And now it's like, you know, you have violent zombie animals and like Disney uh, kind of uh, artwork, and it's great. Yeah. Yeah, um, looks like if the Disney animation team did a zombie outbreak. Yes, yes, absolutely. Act. And then you have the new Ultimate X-Men, which is really good. Yeah. And I believe the artist is the same one you wanted to highlight, right? No. Yeah. Mike? Oh, no. Uh, Peach Momoko is the artist of that, but that's a different artist on the cover there. That's, I think, okay. Mark Brooks. Okay. No, I wanted to talk about Sozo Micah, but whenever you guys are ready. Yeah, yeah. One second. Uh, Ultimate yeah. X-Men is really good. I'm just trying to run through. My my list is very small. Um, <laughs> Superman oh, yeah, Space you got Age. It. Yeah. Age. Space Age is really good. Although I don't like the uh, paper used in this, but I think they did it for the uh, kind of retro feel, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have to check I, that because I've only read it's this. Like a it's not a glossy paper, right? No, it's, it's like... not glossy. It's really papery. Let me I... tell you what's going to make you like that, though. Um, if you hold it under a neon light mm -hmm. compared to like a glossy book under a neon light, there's no glare. There's no glare. The, the it absorbs the light. It looks way better, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I get that. I get that. And silverfish yeah. like it better too, but. And uh, uh, real quick, uh, the artwork in this is simply phenomenal. It's going back to like the old school kind of style. I really like it. Mm -hmm. um, the same artist oh, as yeah. that Batman book yeah. that I was telling you about earlier, Dark Age. Oh, really? Yeah, they're they're kind of like brother books. They're they're nice. same writer. Oh, the same Dark artist. Age and then Space Age. Okay, got uh huh. It. See what they yep. did there? Yeah, right, right. Um, and then Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, really good. This is where Uncle Ben lives. Yeah. Mm. Spoiler, sorry everybody. Okay. <laughs> I think it's been it's out long enough, pages, right? First issue. <laughs> Exactly. That yeah, I think people big... get like a two week window to yeah, complain yeah. about spoilers. And then, um, Void Rivals for the Energon universe. Um, I didn't get to read uh, Cobra Commander yet or Duke because I'm missing the first two issues of Duke. Uh, I read the first two issues of Cobra Commander, which is phenomenal. It makes me want to start collecting G.I. Joe again, Transformers, and all this stuff, you know. Uh, Void Riders, really good. And again, a reminder to you, Jeff, I need issue seven, please. Yes, you got it. <laughs> and, and just to close out what I was saying with Transformers being the, the best book, it's got all of these characters that you've come to love because of their toys, and it gives them such an amazing personality, unlike anything I've seen outside of the, the cartoons. And like, <laughs> it's the best like war veteran comic book I have read in years. Like it deals with Optimus Prime having PTSD from fighting in a multi-century war. And it's so relatable. Like you can just see why it would fuck him up and it's uh, it, it's real it what well, it's this, this book about crazy alien robots punching each other somehow is a commentary on war itself and the trauma that you get from being in war and it's also gorgeously drawn not even getting to that part of it it's it's an amazing comic book that i would recommend to anybody no matter whether they like the Transformers or not. It's just a really good comic book. No, that's what drawn me to it, because I was like, whoa, this is a very serious <clears throat> Transformers comic. Yeah. You know, I felt like the IDW stuff was like, was like, eh, it's kind of like, I couldn't get into it. It's kind of goofy. It wasn't like as serious. This, I like, with anything image does art it's more is the true. art it's... the art draws you in it's more serious it's more brutal where you're like whoa like i feel like this is graphic even though you have like 
machines getting blown apart, yeah. you know? And, and they do something that I think a lot of comic books need to, to stand up and pay attention to, and that was the, the choreography of the fights. Like, mm-hmm. you can actually see that there was effort put into the, the choreography of the battles. Like, and it made me just notice how much of every issue of Spider-Man is just cross, uppercuts, <laughs> and then across again, and that's it. Well, and, it didn't that, skip scenes. It kind of transitioned and made more sense. Full page <laughs> fight scenes. I like yeah. that. But it, it had moves. Like you could yes. see. I know what move. I know what that move is called. And it's yeah. not just punch, punch, jab, jab. <laughs> what everything else kind of looks like, especially after you've looked at this book and then go look at, at other books and and like so. Yet again, the the silly comic book about the aliens, the punch, alien robots that punch each other, is somehow doing a better job of fight choreography than the Shang Chi comic book does. <laughs> You know, uh, Daniel Warren Johnson is a huge wrestling fan, right? He did that do a power bomb comic, mm-hmm. uh, so that probably has a lot to do oh, with yeah. how what he's bringing to the game. You know, because all that stuff is very choreographed too, and you know, it's always cool when a writer or an artist who has like an interest outside of comics, say like mm-hmm. Daniel Warren Johnson with with wrestling bringing that sort of thing uh, or you know like with the anthrax comic we you, you were talking about saying anything that's each outside track of its own yeah yeah that brings a, a unique spin and flavor into the medium of comics is and that's why you get those cool fight scenes and transformers that you don't see in a lot of books you know absolutely it, he, uh, there is a suplex yeah prime suplex is one of the decepticons uh, it's just perfect it's so good no, I, I, that's why I, I absolutely love all this stuff blending in together, especially with the Duke comic, the Cobra Commander, and the Transformers. It's all coming into one, and, and Void Rivals coming into this. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, last my last comic, Void Rivals. <laughs> you know, again, uh, simply bringing all this together into this universe that you didn't expect to come together, you know, like oh. you were saying, Jeff. Yeah. And it's simply phenomenal, and I, I absolutely love it. And I was like, whoa, this is pulling yeah, I mean, me back into something that was made for kids back in the 80s, yeah. you know? And I think that's the problem with a lot of these properties where it's like, you know, these were made back in the 80s. The people who adored these that are still supporting these are adults now. How about make these properties into more of an adult-oriented thing, which I think... I'm gonna say it right now. There should be an a, like an R-rated Star Wars movie. There should be an absolute like, like brutal like, you know, Star Wars movie. You know, stuff like that. Like these these are properties we're supporting still. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. Rogue One was almost that. Almost yeah. kind of exactly. Yeah, yeah. I but I wanted like... more Darth Vader killing people. Where I'm like, I wanted yeah, him. That's an amazing scene. Yeah, and that was he killed cool. everybody. He had nobody left. <laughs> I felt like they, you know, sidetracking here. I felt like they dropped the ball with the Obi Wan series, and I was like, God, this okay. been so much more violent, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I wanted Darth Vader to cut people in half. Although I loved um, the new Star Wars Darth Vader black, white, and red, and especially in that big edition oh that, that, that treasury that edition treasury absolutely <laughs> phenomenal comic and i loved it i did a whole video on that where that was like the most violent darth vader comic i've ever seen where he brought down a whole rebel star sh- like a rebel transport <laughs> it's like oh shit our families are coming down on us it's like yeah darth vader brought that down that's cool we didn't ever mm-hmm. see kind of stuff like that in the movies which i'm hopeful for in the um new image property in the Energon universe, I want a more violent Hasbro universe. These properties are old enough, yeah. you know? I just finished reading Cobra Commander 3. Uh, man, like, it's just an entire issue where these uh, characters are, are torturing Cobra Commander and they just, they do not break him. Of course, it's Cobra Commander. Mm-hmm. And, 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 but like it doesn't shy <laughs> away from like the dude uses like a chainsaw on him and he still doesn't talk and it's just so much damn fun and it's, it's 
like I mean it, it it's surprisingly good because like Transformers I, I'm in the bag for you got you you gotta get me to at least try it but then I didn't expect to love it this much and I'm not a GI Joe kid I, I don't know any of the characters I didn't collect any of the toys and <laughs> it's at the top of my reading pile whenever a new issue comes out like it's just so much fun enjoyable action sci-fi with military intrigue sprinkled yeah. on top of it. it it's a really fun but, series of books but that's what i was saying you two guys <laughs> in general like would you ever expect a violent gi joe or transformers uh property to ever exist from you guys growing up where you're like I remember this is you know I used to watch this as a kid. It was not this violent. <laughs> I don't know, man. the The movie, the 1985 movie, has people getting or well, not people, robots. Oh, Duke, Duke getting totally gets totally murdered. You talking about the animated one? Yeah, yeah, Duke, the classic. Duke gets uh gets like a snake in the heart by a Serpentor. Really? They so yeah, he turns it into like a he takes a snake and turns it into a lance and he lives. He lives. But yeah, he, he gets snaked to the. That's I mean, that was the formula people. they took from Transformers. The movie was, you know, Optimus Prime gets killed in the beginning. Of course, Optimus Prime's a robot. Duke was a human, so they didn't want to kill him. Hmm. Uh, but they, uh, you know, they, they incapacitated them for the movie, and they introduced Flint uh, to be, you know, who's essentially Duke, but with brown hair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a little more wet behind the ears, uh, so they have a little bit of character development happening in the movie. But uh, yeah, it was you know it was the same same formula. But the that one went straight to video. Uh, Transformers went to theaters and did poorly when it came out, and uh, so GI Joe went straight to home video, which back then even was kind of a big deal. You know, back in the eighties was. You know that it didn't debut on television and had a little bit of blood in it. And that was exciting for us kids back then to see that. Oh, Duke's got blood in him. Look at that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me growing up, I grew up with uh, not the original Duke. You know, Snake Eyes, that kind of stuff. I grew up with these random 12-inch figures, and I used to play with those. And I was like, I don't know who the fuck they are. You mean like, the old oh, ones? Is- with the beards? In the 90s ones that had like the fake facial hair and everything. There was like a, a jungle expeditioner one that had a tiger that's, with it. That's from before the 90s. That That's yeah. like back in the 60s. Yeah. They had claws. Yeah, that was the outfit. 90s because like I had it. My dad gave it to me for Toys R Us. It was like the newer one where it had like the fake oh. hair. Yeah, they did a whole new series. I guess they were rebranding all the 12-inch figures. Mm-hmm. So I didn't grow up with the 6-inch figures. But I did, like I said earlier, like... My first G.I. Joe cartoon was Sergeant Savage. Where he was like, Here's some fun and... trivia yeah. about G.I. Joe. Um, so, yeah, G.I. Joe was a toy line in, in the 60s, and they were big. Yeah. But when uh, after Star Wars hit big, the Kenner toys, the three-inch They figures, started doing the six-inch ones, yeah. They Well, they three-inch, three and a, three and a quarter. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So they went three-inch in, in 1982. And uh, they went to, I believe, Marvel Comics about developing a storyline. And how Larry Hama got the job for G.I. Joe was he already had a pitch in at Marvel for a Nick Fury comic, Nick Fury Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. versus Hydra, which if you think about it... It's Cobra. S.H.I.E.L.D. and Cobra. (laughs) I mean, you just had to change a few things. And uh, that became, you know, the the early G.I. Joe... Uh, I think Sergeant Flag, and if you read those early issues from the 80s, there was a guy, Sergeant Flag, and he was essentially your Nick Fury character, and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, there's a whole history you can Google and get more accurate information than what I'm telling you right now, but <laughs> that was that was the original, and, and Larry Hama, he wrote all the file cards that went on the back of the action figures as well. Oh, wow. Uh, they have all, all the backstory. Cool. Really? He wrote all that stuff. That's all. And it's it's amazing because I he's a Facebook friend of mine. And he will put on Facebook randomly, wow, you know, no conventions are inviting me out. I'm like, how are we sleeping on this? Because this guy, I mean, Stanley's dead, guys. 
this guy's one of the biggest titans in comics right now. You know, that people are sleeping on. Because he did create all those G.I. Joe comics that we all love as animation, as toys, as comic books, you know, and still a lot of warm feelings about them. And, and you know, you, you don't really... He should be the headliner at Comic-Con Revolution next month, you know? Well, well it sounds like we need to get him on the show. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that into uh, fruition right here. Um, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> I mean, he always writes me back when I write him. He sent That's me awesome. a friend request. I'm oh, like, what yeah. the world? I didn't believe it was really him. And I, wrote, I was like, are you the Larry Hama? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's and awesome. I'd love to talk he to him. He has some be... amazing stories about the comic book industry. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. That would be somebody we definitely need to get on. That would be phenomenal to hear his insight on everything, you know? Oh, it would be super cool. Well, let's get a few episodes under our belt. I'm also friends with, uh, I can't remember her last name, but her first name's Diana. And she is kind of like the brand ambassador for G.I. Joe. Hell yeah. Um, and she's a believe it or not a fan of me and Raphael's comic Guns Blazing. I will bust out all my GI Joes. I still have all that shit. My mom is like, "Don't get rid of this stuff." I was like, oh, and I have like all loves, these. Dude. I have the big toys. I have like so my dad. Did you get the made, uh, the ship, the the um, aircraft carrier? No, I wish no, my dad did. used to have that. But I have the old school '80s big like Jeep, where it's like these big stupid wheels. They're like this week, mm-hmm. like this big, you know. So I have all that. I actually have an original Snake Eyes, and then uh, <coughs> some other dude. He was a Cobra dude. He had these weird big shoulder pads. <laughs> I don't have any Transformers, unfortunately. You know, you know we'll why Snake Eyes uh, looks like he looks? No, why? They wanted to save money on the first run. The first figures, I think it was like thirteen figures, uh-huh. and they needed to save money on paint because all the figures they required paint paint jobs. So they put out Snake Eyes, who was all black, mm-hmm. just because they, they, they just had a, they just needed a black mold, and there was no paint on them. So they were able to take some oh, of the budget hard. to paint the other figures. Um, and yeah. look, he became the most popular one, you know. Yeah, I have the original Snake Eyes 12 inch. I should, I should. Oh, put okay. It sometime, yeah, it's kind of cool. But anyway, so we talked about all the books that we're reading this month. What are the new books coming out next month? Uh, Again, I don't have my preview copies, so I'm kind of out of it. Jeff, what are your uh, what are you most excited for next month? Continuations uh, of series or what? I mean, aside just from another issue of Ultimate Spider-Man that I wait, uh, <laughs> sad puppy by the door waiting for the next issue of. Um, also enjoying the the X Men uh, universe, uh, the. The end of the Krakoan age, <clears throat> as they're calling it, uh, and it's kind of all coming to a close. And they've got some big mysteries, and they're they're releasing just of it, enough of it at a time to really keep me on the hook. Uh, also, just kind of a silly thing that's really fun is Weapon X Men, which is the Phoenix has to put together a team to fight Onslaught. From another dimension. Oh, is that the one where they're going back in time and they only have like one shot doing it? I'm, yeah, you're right. And, and it's a group of yeah, Wolverines. Yeah. It's all Wolverines from different universes, including some universes we've actually seen before. It has the Marvel Zombies Wolverine is a member Ooh. of the team. And it has <clears throat> the Earth X Wolverine where he's just a fat old man. And, and <laughs> it has the mo- probably the most importantly and the coolest is it has the Age of Apocalypse Wolverine, the one where Cyclops shot off his hand, so he's just got a little metal plate on for one hand. Uh, it's just really cool, uh, very referential to to classic X Men stories, but not in a way where you have to have actually read them. If you just like Wolverine, you will get this book. No old man Logan? No, uh, actually, uh, there's uh, kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's just, it, it's real fun. It really plays with your love of Wolverine. And it's uh, enjoyable and just the right amount of silly, but also the right amount of, like I said, r- referential, uh, like, 
no, this is cool that all these Wolverines are getting together and fighting Onslaught. I'm, I'm a kid of the 90s, so I <clears throat> a sucker for Onslaught, man. Onslaught rocked my world uh, <laughs> as a little teenager. Who um, do you think the bigger threat is, Onslaught or Apocalypse, when it comes to X-Men villains? I mean, it is Onslaught because he's just like a cosmically powered villain. Do you yeah. think he's on par with um Jesus, now it's like slipping my mind. Galactus? No. Um well in this book, yes. Yeah. Wasn't he like a merger of Professor X and Magneto and Legion kind of? Yeah. In a way, it was Professor <laughs> Professor X mind wiped Magneto when he had just had enough of Magneto's shit. He's like, you're my friend. I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to erase all of these memories that made you such an asshole. And when that moment happens, uh, Magneto's psyche jumps into all those awful memories, jump into Professor X. Mm -hmm. and so it's Professor X with the memories and therefore personality of a bad guy. And, and the concept is that Professor X if he really wanted to be a bad guy would be the worst bad guy in the history of the Marvel Universe and that's where they kind of go with it okay real quick it's it's just it's one of those things where it's slipping on and it's really bothering <coughs> who is uh, Silver Surfer the herald of right Galactus okay it is okay yeah, Galactus is just yeah. like a cosmic stoner he's always hungry yeah that's what I'm saying okay yeah he I, goes I, around I, I thought plants. I had it right just trying to like, what is it? Yeah, right? That'd be a funny what if. Like, what if Galactus yeah. smoked a giant bong? And you would just he go around the planet and eat. into a giant hey. bong. And he had an insatiable eat, eat, munchies. Eat, eat. <laughs> he turned the moon into a bong just like an apple. Um, the insatiable my, munchies. <laughs> my, I taught my daughter about Galactus because we have a big Galactus toy up on the wall up, up over there. And... Uh, one time we were eating dinner and she pointed at him and said, why does he eat people instead of hamburgers? <laughs> it's like, because they can't make a hamburger big enough for him, honey. I mean, that should be an, an issue right there. It's just like, we, we made an artificial planet hamburger for a <laughs> yeah, Like a vegan Galactus. <laughs> That's how we defeated Galactus. We yeah. made him the insatiable hamburger. <laughs> Put a lot of fiber in there so it would fill them up for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Mike, anything else you see coming out next month that you're excited about? Do you want for? me to talk about April or do you want me to talk about the month of June? Uh, so next month, uh, it's it's not a huge month, which is good because Record Store Day is next month, too. Uh, so Don't get um, me started on that. That's another thing, too. Yeah, that's another <laughs> show. I picked um, up about 20 records this month, so... Oh, my God. So, Deadpool number one is coming out next month. Uh, we're getting well, it's ready. It's a new series. Like, okay. It's not Deadpool Wolverine, though. That's later. Okay, that's it's May. Yeah. Uh, that Deadpool number one is coming out this week, actually, of the new ongoing Deadpool series. It's I, a writer I've never heard of. But, uh, okay. That, that, the, sorry, not to cut you off, but that's my biggest yeah. problem, because, like, I've been... Like, oh, I've had these issues on my pull, and I always hate it when they change, and it's like, oh, but it's a new series now. I'm like, God damn it. Like, what? This issue, like, this pull, like, this series only went 10 issues, and I have mm -hmm. to pull another issue, and it's just like, all it's these. It's been a while since there's been, been a Deadpool yeah. comic, right? Deadpool's been kind of, he's been chilling for the Krakoan era. He's really not been. I haven't seen a, a comic. A part of it at all. Maybe a mini series here and there, but yeah. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I, the last thing I got was a seven, uh, seven slaughters or something, and then like mm -hmm. just all these things here and there, but it's just like, God, there's just so many different writers jumping on Deadpool, I feel like. Yeah, well, there's that, and then there's going to be that Deadpool Wolverine in May, but. I'm getting Deadpool number one, uh, Little Jeffrey Don't Forget Me, for the Sean Galloway cover. I, I'm a big fan of that artist, so he's yeah. he's doing that cover. Uh, it's coming out next week. Um, the Immortal Thor is doing a cool little storyline right now uh, that's very uh, kind of meta, self-referential, uh, where he's dealing with Marvel Comics itself, the company. Um, and there's going to be a, a spinoff. 
Well, is it Marvel? Or did you read the latest Thor? It's called yeah. Rocks on Comics. Rocks on. Oh, yes, yeah. I have read it. It's it's a commentary on like how stories change. Because, like, Thor is hearing this story of his own life, and he's like, was I really like that? Was I that big of an <laughs> asshole? Were you, and Loki's like, yeah, you kind of were. And uh, But it's also, like, it's very much a meta-commentary on how the, when we tell a story, we change it. And <clears throat> uh, part of the plot is that Roxxon Company buys the rights to publish the Thor comic book. But they have the Enchantress there so that, like, when they publish this comic book, it changes Thor's history and origin as they right. publish the comic book, which is a commentary on how new comic books <laughs> change the origin of characters. And, and like, the, the idea that the way the story is told is the truth. Because yeah closest to the truth you can get the way it's told is the way it's told and that becomes the truth and so it's very very meta, meta. very grant morrison animal man is very cool i'm yeah. really cool enjoying it uh al ewing is just an ass kicker man he he's done a lot of really great comic books uh specifically the immortal hulk uh and this is in that hulk same hulk. vein of that so there's going to be the Immortal Thor, the regular issues coming out next month, and then there's the Roxxon Thor, which is a one-shot, which is, I guess, going to be that their version of, of this Thor. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Again, uh, real quick side note, I have no clue why the, uh, again, Superman Space Age hardcover was the same price as the Immortal Thor soft cover trade. I was like, Jesus. Like that blew me away. I was like, what? And the Thor is not as many pages, right? Exactly. I just I don't know what Marvel was thinking of with that. I think it didn't make any sense to me. I'm just oh, saying I think it's Alex Ross's fault. I blame Alex like, I blame Alex Ross for everything. It's not his fault, but <laughs> how much can we bend our customers over the table? Will they really pay thirty dollars for this graphic novel because it's good? Like, I mean, I mean, you gotta understand where I'm coming it's... from, right? Like, I was like, that's pretty steep. Like the hardcover version, I was like, all right, cool. I, I, I justify know. thirty bucks for that, but a soft cover for thirty bucks? Yeah, that's a bit pretty steep. Firm. And it's only six issues in it. Yeah, isn't it five? Five dollars an issue. That's five. cover price. So it's not cheaper than buying single issues, which has always been part of the allure of graphic novels, is that they're cheaper than the monthly issues. It's just, it, it's shocking. It's flabbergasting, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's more than a monthly issue, because the, the books are $5, so you have five issues, that's 25 I think the first issue an was like an seven annual. or eight. Okay. And Either way, uh, it's worth it. I, it's still good. It's so good. It's like the best thing Marvel's publishing. So I don't want to it tell anybody to not buy it. But it's also yeah. very much Marvel is fucking fiddling while Rome burns. Like the comic book industry is in shambles everywhere, and they release a crazy overpriced book with no extra material or anything in it. Like I, I if it was hardcover, yeah, hardcover for thirty bucks. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I with like with what... the extra art in the back, and you know stuff like that, it'd be kind of cool. I'm like, all right, I could justify that. But a yeah. soft cover for thirty, that was kind of steep. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, like it's the, good. Like the, the the like the the flash omnibuses for Jeff Johns that have like twenty issues a piece are thirty five. Like it's just I, I don't know what the explanation for that was. It's just wild anyway yeah anyway. not what our guys, fault yeah what do you guys think the biggest book or what new book do you think is going to debut next month that's going to be really worth watching or like reading not watching we're not we're not watching Are you talking we're about reading. like investment wise or a book that's no gonna no 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 just something that's going to start next month that's going to be really worth picking up because the only thing i, I have my preview books. Month for me <laughs> For me personally, is is uh, Deadpool next month? 
there's some stuff popping in May, uh, but um, next oh, month is like this kind of quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything you've seen, Jeff? Oh, I don't organize my, <laughs> my thoughts in that way. <laughs> um, this is what a nerd I am. I got yeah. my. This is April, <laughs> May, June. There you go. Yeah. I mean, to me, the big things are, like I said, continuing when we, books. The first, the first trades of, I just put the order in for the first trade of Transformers. I'm so excited for that to come out because I want to talk to people about it. I want to hand it to them. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with Ultimate Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. um, this is the Spider-Man book that everybody who loves Spider-Man has been dying to read for 10 years. It's... Uh, just so much more enjoyable than Amazing Spider-Man, and it's so much yeah. more Spider-Man than Amazing Spider-Man is. It's it's a fantastic comic book. It's going to go down as as an all timer, and so I'm just excited for that first trade to come out, so I can put it in more people's hands because it, even if you don't know it yet, y'all want to be reading Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, I've kind of questioned why I was like, why do I still pick up Alt our Amazing Spider-Man? I'm kind of like getting kind of bored of it. I don't know. Cannot wait for the next <laughs> creative team. Uh, just like, kidding. that's the thing with spider I feel like Spider-Man is Marvel's um, Batman, where there's like so many different, like, there's, you got Superior Spider-Man, you got the Spine Tingling Spider-Man, right? And then you have like the mm -hmm. horror one, and then you have- That was Spine one. Tingling was the oh, horror yeah, that's the, that's yeah. the horror one. It's Miles, like honestly, yeah. the, the real Spider-Man is Miles right now. It's a much better comic book. Yeah. There's the Spectacular Spider-Man that yeah. started. It's just, it's just a lot. Like where I'm like, all right, you guys are doing the Batman thing where there's like 15 books at the same time, and I'm like, I think, can't read I think all it's this. worse over for the X-Men. Like the Spider-Man, the the continuity is pretty separate. Like you don't yeah. have to read Amazing to read Spectacular at the very least. Whereas with X-Men, it's all tied in so tightly together that if you miss one of Any the of series over here you have no idea what's going yeah. on in the main title here um, all right um just a quick side segment here going on to that maybe we'll do it for another topic i'll put it in your brains now but when it comes to certain uh properties like x-men spider-man batman what do you think the core series are just put it in your heads we don't have to answer it now put it in your heads we'll do that for next time because this is getting kind of ridiculous where it's just like, oh, there's so many different issues, so many series. What do you think the absolute core uh, series that epitomizes that whole character? You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. let's start thinking about that because I get overwhelmed with it when there's so many books. Yeah. You know? I have a feeling, uh, kind of to speak to that, but not totally. Uh, I have a feeling because Batman's coming up on issue 150. Uh, and I know that Rom V's run on Detective is ending with issue 1089, and that's going to be the end of that. So that means the Detective's going to have a new direction, if I'm sure to keep it going. And then this summer, we got Mark Wade and Dan Mora are kind of doing the whole DCU mini, you know, crossover universe wide. So with Batman coming to 150, and considering Batman is pretty much three-fourths of the DC universe right now. Um, I don't know if Chip, they have a new uh, group editor on Batman that just joined recently. Uh, I don't know if Chip Darcy's going to stay on after issue 150. So we might be looking at another rebirth scale reset happening after summer. That's my suspicion. And we're supposed, they're supposed to be, I got a little inside information boys and girls can you talk about it though before we say something? i i cannot i can't go into detail okay don't go but into there's detail. but yeah. there's the, i don't have to because by the time this show airs uh let's just say that it is what time is it now uh Shane? sunday night at sunday night at 10 15 10 15 10 15 so sunday 10 15 mike wellman said there's going to be some major announcement before 
probably midweek this week, probably before New Comic Day, is going to shake up the comic book industry. Wow. And I Whoa. think you're going to feel it in the DC Wait, book. so we'll, we'll see this before this pops off? Probably. Well, if this pops off on Tuesday, it'll be like, oh, then, yeah, yeah. I, I think... You might even see it as soon as tomorrow, but Ooh. there's going to be some major rumbles, and it's going to affect. Right, right. How major rumbles? Like, come on! Like, I remember. You're going to feel it. Like, okay, I remember the '52. And I yeah. remember the rebirth, and I was like, this is more on the business side, but I think it's going to affect the creative stuff too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I Hopefully, think. it's we'll something see. positive. It could be wrong. It could be wrong. Yeah. Hopefully, it's something I positive. I hope you aren't, because uh, there needs to be some shaking up. Well, when yeah, when uh, my my battery's at ten percent, so if I do die, uh, I'm still alive. My it's just my phone. No, uh, no, right. no. Maybe it's it's with not that, like with uh, that. With that being said, let's go on to our last topic here. For because, sure, yeah. Because uh, I can't say much more than what I just yeah, said. Yeah, exactly. For something for the month of March that has just been uh, consuming us all was the new X Men '97 show, which yeah. I've been super stoked on. Uh, I remember watching his kid, and then like I remember talking to these guys about it. I was like, "Oh shit!" Like I, I don't remember a lot of it. They were filling me in. They're like, "Oh, this is like going back to this comic and this comic and this comic," you know. So um, let's talk about the new X Men X Men ninety seven uh reboot or continuation. Continuation, yeah, it's pretty yeah, much exactly. Let's go to the Look, comic book kind of like references. The day. Yeah. Take it away, little G, in case my phone yeah. dies. I'm gonna bow out, but uh, go ahead. I'm gonna listen. I'll be here listening. Uh, it's. It's just so obviously a love letter to X-Men and the history of the X-Men. Like, they're tying together stuff. You can just see the issues that they were reading when they were making this this run of the show. Uh, because, like, issue 200 of Uncanny X-Men is called The Trial of Magneto. And he's wearing the very purple drape with the, M? With the white M on it. And then that is right after Storm gets depowered because she fights for the right to be the leader of the X-Men in X-Men 201, the very next issue. Uh, and then that is also the birth of Nathan Summers, uh, which we also saw in, in that mm -hmm. so episode should, three. Yeah. And so it just keeps... Uh, referencing this awesome era of comic books like the Paul Smith into Mark Silvestri into Jim Lee era of, of X-Men. And you can see it also because I went back and looked at the classic original X-Men cartoon and I was like, oh, there's Phoenix Saga, there's the Dark Phoenix Saga. They were very much doing the John Byrne era uh, of the X-Men and the issues right after the John Byrne runs it like the Dave Cockrum stuff and now you can just see that they were holding up this issue in the writer's room being like here's the here's the one we're talking about this issue here's X-Men 200 everyone take it home and read it and and it's just so fun to see that and you can like see the issues that they're referring to because they they visually refer to those issues as well like there's uh the nightmare that gambit has when the goblin queen attacks all the x-men mentally and it's the cover of of an issue of x-men where rogue and magneto are trapped in the savage land and they kind of uh hook up and it's like the exact cover um like uh, when madeline Pryor goes to her room to hold baby Nate and she throws a, a, a their wedding photo on the ground and breaks the, the frame but you can see the photo it's the cover of X-Men number 30 which is the issue where Gene and Scott get married and just all of this cool stuff that you get to see if you have been an X-Men head as long as I have X-Men is what got me into comic books really uh, like I said my dad got me into comic books but what he used to do it was X-Men uh, specifically the John Byrne era of X-Men, which is issues 108 to 143 of Uncanny X-Men. And that is very much every single one of those issues has an episode from the original run uh, of of X-Men, uh, the cartoon. It's uh, Days of Future Past, uh, Dark Phoenix Saga, Phoenix Saga, 
uh, Proteus, like all of these have episodes from that first initial run. They very much were writing a love letter to that era. And now they're moving on to the next era, which is just so cool as a comic book fan, because like every era of the X-Men has some important stuff happening in it. And just how foundational the John Byrne era was, and then the era right after it, how foundational that was, because the Madeline Pryor and Nathan Summers and Nathan Summers having the 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 techno virus yeah. like that they show in the cartoon. And it's like, yeah, Bishop takes the kid to the future. It's not Bishop in the original comic book, but it is uh, a member of the X-Men that has to take baby Nathan to the future because it's the only way he can be saved. And just all of this stuff is from the comic books. And it's so cool because when you see the movies and some of this other stuff and you're like, oh, well, this just wasn't in the comic books. They're just kind of doing their own thing. And for X-Men to be like, oh, whoa, that's that panel from that issue. It's so fun to see that. That's cool because it's old school issues, not new shit. They're pulling from old Absolutely. stuff. You know? this, is the, this is the early 80s run of X-Men, which is just definitive when it comes to the X-Men. And it's, it's also just visually stunning. This is an amazing era for comic book art and to see the them, animation is great and to see them but they're taking their notes from this run of the x-men like the comic books look like this mm -hmm. like paul smith is a hugely underrated all-time artist but specifically his run on x-men looks like a cartoon man it looks like alex toth and and that like that you can get no higher form of flattery from me than to say you look like alex's work and Paul Smith just kills it with the X-Men. He's the he draws the issue where Storm fights the leader of the Morlocks for for uh, to the death to be the leader of the Morlocks. Like that's from that issue, and it, that's what the cartoon looks like. Cartoon looks like they took his drawings and, and animated them. And like I see on the I see on the internet, like there are so many memes about this we've we're only three episodes in and there are more x-men memes than i have seen <laughs> in my entire life and they're like what cyclops was always cool because one of them is like wait cyclops is the cool one and it's the the astronaut with the gun yep it has been and and, <laughs> and i'm like this is three episodes and these are three episodes that are just panel to panel recreations from the comic book but that's and it's great. like they're paying homage to it that's know that i'm i'm saying that that's a positive yeah. thing that's amazing because i don't know it's a little validating man because people make fun of fucking comic books they they don't think of comic books as cool they don't think of comic books as literary I don't think so much as now, but people are saying they, they, the walls have weakened a yes, little bit. Yes. yes but, but all right, my whole you thing can't is go to a college, take a class on the literature of comics. And that's ridiculous. It's the most American art form around. We, exactly. You know, exactly. And uh, you, tying in the creation of Superman is the metaphor oh. or the, the, uh, for the Jewish experience in the 1930s. And then it becomes, the metaphor for immigration into the United States. And this is the first superhero. It's part of the DNA of comic books is American. And uh, it's it's not thought of as something America should be proud of when it's the fucking thing we should be the most proud of. We created an art form and we created a genre when everything, on, something... the, everything on the earth has been done before. Yeah, and... something that people can look up to. Like yeah. these characters are inspiring. You know, yes, it, it, yes. Kid, uh, like you're like, holy shit, like that's awesome. Like I can see myself in this character. Or, like the, I want to be like this character. You know, growing yeah, up, the amount of people who <sighs> I told me that like comics made them a better person, and, and it's like, how many fucking TV shows do you watch and become a better person? Like that's that's amazing uh, that's it, it's uncanny uh, if you will hey i heard what you did there <laughs> and 
I, I think that's something special. And I think all of the these memes are just like I said, they're just validation that this this stuff is awesome, man. Like it's so cool and it's been cool forever. You're all just catching up now. Mm-hmm. And and I, yeah. I'm not one of those gatekeepers that is like, oh, you didn't I want think everybody to come into this. Free, so you know? you're not cool now. No, I love seeing these memes. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I want I want to tell them like, oh, if you think that's cool, you need to like read all of this. But I, I am not mad at anybody for coming to the party late. Like, yes, please keep coming to this party because I won't be happy until you have to take a comic book class to graduate from college. <laughs> I had to fucking read Shakespeare. That boring ass shit. Get out of here. <laughs> I, I, but nobody has to read an X-Men comic book. That's... No. No. Hey, you Switch that. Preach it. Preach it. Coming back to X-Men 97 now. So I noticed the intro is a little bit different. How come there's no rogue ass shot? <laughs> the original. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't see it. Or do you guys see it? There's still that big rogue ass shot that's in it I, they changed a couple of the characters on the villain lineup as well um <laughs> exactly I, I love the addition of morph getting his own little title card for it yeah yeah, really yeah, cool. yeah and uh like the bishop title card is awesome because it's the logo from the bishop comic book like to get, get back to the talking about all of the, the photo references like it's the it's the logo from the bishop comic book and it's and i'm like oh that's so cool <laughs> and so very specific that's not an accident that's you can't do this on accident it, it looks great and it's cool because it's referencing the 90s bishop comic book that was drawn by carlos pacheco it's a gorgeous comic book well, what do you what do you guys think of um the series been kind of sped up where it's like not even like just one issue an episode right now it's like two issues or like they're like mashing issues together like i feel like this like this new um continuation is like really super fast paced from like three episodes in it's like yeah it is let up yeah but also if you'll let me be the cranky old man as well the comic (laughs) books used to be fast paced yeah, exactly, exactly. But they're going super fast, I feel, to me. To me, or I'm like, oh, shit, they were just in the UN. But that's also how you fast know, the issues yeah. came out, man. I can tell you each issue that they're referencing. And oh, it's, yeah, yeah. Well, no, Break that it all down issue by issue. One issue. How many, yeah, how many issues were brought up in these three episodes? Uh, I mean, their, their timeline isn't exactly the same, so there's going to be a little bit of, of differentiating because, like, Bishop actually doesn't show up for quite a few years after this point in X-Men lore, and so that's a little different, but it's, like, it's... Does it make right sense, at, though, that Bishop is in it now? right at X-Men, like, 198, 199, 200, and 201. Like, it's it's all in there um because that's when uh magneto comes to become a headmaster for the new mutants um there there are more characters also in the comic book so uh, they're, they're, i felt that was it. yeah i felt that was strange too it's like morph is like changing into all these other characters I know, like, where the hell are they <laughs> where's like yeah, psylocke and where's the like, oh shit he, he you does know? magic like, with the sword from hell uh, and yeah. Uh, it's all cool stuff, but yeah, it did make me think. But like, wait, but I want a magic. Exactly. Magic Where are I, these characters? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like, oh man, yeah, it's going fast. But that's what comic books used to do. Comic books used to have multiple stuff happening in one issue of the book, rather than one thing happens every five issues. I mean, how do you think the? Uh, I guess. How do you think this season's gonna go? Where do you think they're gonna go with it? Stick to the, uh, the continuation of the storylines with those issues. They're certainly or- gonna deal with the the storm depowering for quite a few of the issues, and I just know that because of the names of the episodes, mm-hmm. um, because it references a very specific comic book that is uh, gorgeous and amazing. Has and that been released already? The rest of the episodes. The episode or- titles have all been released. Yeah, they're on Wikipedia. Mm. And there's oh. an episode called Life Death, and that is the issue of Uncanny X-Men where Storm kind of spiritually has to deal with losing her powers. 
Yeah, yeah. 186 and 198, I believe. Yeah. Barry Winsor Smith. Yep. Got Gorgeous. It. Gorgeous. Got it. And she's hanging out with Forge still, right? Well, that was those books. In the comic book, they were an item, and it was Forge who oh. accidentally depowered her. Oh. But so executioner it wasn't a thing. Not yet, no. Mm -hmm. The executioner is a character, but not for a while. He shows up in the early 90s. He's a very 90s character. Executioner. Uh -huh. Because it's spelled X dash E E I O N T R. So he's she's like the fucking Punisher kind of like against mutants. Pretty yeah. much. That was a that was a crossover called Executioner Song. Right? Ah. Mm -hmm. What about yeah. alright, so alright. My whole thing is like where did Goblin Queen come from or you know what I'm saying? And then That's where did all, like it's all in the comic books? Yeah, uh, and then how did she name herself? Switch, they switched it up a little bit. If, if Mr. I were, Sinister caused that, right? Yeah. If I were to give you one point, I do think they're going a little too fast with that part. Yeah. That Madeline that was out of nowhere. I'm like at the end. What? I was like, wait, no, she's married to Scott. Scott doesn't know. Yeah. Gene even knows who he is. They don't know when this switch happened. So he very well could be in love with Madeline and not Gene. And yeah. they, they didn't address any of that, which I didn't like because like that whole existential argument is a huge part of Yeah, so that's the thing too. When did they even get switched? Like, holy shit. I think they're specifically not telling us because they want us to ask those questions. We'll see if that part comes back. I'm not sure. They could, I, I could see it where they just have Madeline leave off into the sunset and never return, or she comes back and it's a big deal. And, and that's the thing, too. Like, how, the, like, even the comics, did she come up with that name, Madeline Pryor? How the uh, hell did this she is, this come up with that? This is the change that they've, that they've made to the comic book is the mm -hmm. Madeline stuff. Because, yeah, because, like, that's a random ass name out of he nowhere. Dies. During the Phoenix saga, right after Dark Phoenix. Ah. And she stays dead. But then Cyclops is off on shore leave, and he sees a woman that looks exactly like Jean. And they start dating and get married, and they have a kid. Like, it's not Jean, and he doesn't think that it's Jean. And then you find out that she was a clone of Jean, and that's why Cyclops fell in love with her so easily. But she was still her own person with her own thoughts and feelings and desires. She was sucked into it just in the same ah. way as the cartoon. But it was never a question of her being Jean. Like, that never was part of the story. Okay. Because it was that everybody thought Scott was a weirdo for dating this woman. <laughs> who exactly. It like looks exactly girlfriend. like it. But, okay, so... A dead yeah. ringer for your dead girlfriend. It's a little but weird, see, bro. But see, that's the thing. Continuing off the TV show, he didn't know she was dead. It seemed like, you know, where was that transition from the last season of X Men uh, to X Men '97, where all of a sudden, like, they didn't know, you know, she never died. You know, that kind of thing. Well, it's, I mean, it's all kind of guessing from the fandom of the show. Uh, there is a point where Jean Grey is captured by Mr. Sinister in the original run of the cartoon. And so mm. everyone's kind of saying... So that might have been the point. switch? Yeah, because that's uh, on their honeymoon. Uh, ah. They do get married, but then on their honeymoon, Sinister attacks and he captures Jean. And so the thought is that that's where the switch took, pl took place. Uh, meaning that, I mean, yeah, he married Jean, but then he's been married to Madeline for years. And so the idea of just kind of letting her leave and tossing her away, I don't think is is good. So I hope they bring her back. Yeah, because that was like years, apparently. Yes, this is, yeah, that was years of story that they kind of fast-tracked. Skips. Skips. Yeah. More or less. And then, then that's the thing, too, where it's just like, uh, okay, she's pregnant all of a sudden. That's nine months right there. You know, so like... Gene's just been captive by Mr. Sinister this whole time. Well, I mean, in the original comic book, Gene was sitting in a cocoon at the bottom of the ocean for 15 years. Seven years. What'd you say, Mike? Nine? Seven years, something like that. Many years. Really? Because it's a jump from Uncanny X-Men 136 to 
Is that Avengers 227? Uh, well, can't... X-Factor number one, right? Yeah, yeah. And then X-Factor number 10 came out around the time of X-Men. So around X-Men 136 and around X-Men 200. Because X- X-Factor 10 mm-hmm. and X-Men 210 uh, were like Fall of the Mutants. Okay. So, so yeah, so 70 issues of the comic books. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is why I'm excited to do this too because I'm learning like more history about like things I don't need to read. We're remembering, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But no, the, the, this cartoon I feel like is invigorating like new life into the whole series, and it's it's pandering to the older fans. Like like I said, yeah. I watched it as a child, you know, so I didn't take it as seriously as I didn't, you know, I wasn't reading the comics in tandem with the show but now as, as an adult i'm like holy shit this is fucking super violent and like this is really good and like wow this storytelling is just like bringing me into all this stuff or i i you know i should have watched rewatched all the old stuff but mm-hmm. going back to all the older issues and learning all this lore and what's different and everything is just is, it's awesome. I love it. But like, like I was saying, it's it just it proves to you that X Men have always been cool, because this is just the X Men comic book, man. Like oh, there yeah. is no, there it is all just straight out of there. And, and like I, 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 I think it, it, I love it. I love seeing all of these kids losing their shit and saying like, "Oh man, Cyclops is cool." When did this happen? I was like, "He's <laughs> cool for at least." Well, a he's day. a square in the show, though. In the show, he was a bit of a square. Although, like, I just started showing my daughter the original run, and we got the first two, uh, first two episodes. And even then, Cyclops does a not joke, like, "Oh, let me give up, not," and then shoots the head off the Sentinel. I'm like, "That was cool. That was cool." And it, the, yeah, it's '90s, but it. Everybody did those jokes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Sorry, youngins. We definitely did a (laughs) lot of not jokes. And and it works, but it's not... uh, It doesn't feel tacked on or anything because it was very real back then. And uh, Yeah, going back to those 90s jokes, jokes, do you think they're going to incorporate some of that humor? And here's the thing, too. What is your prediction for the end of this season? What issue of a comic do you think they're going to end off of? Oh, that's a good question. I need, I, I would want more time to work on the answer. To that. <laughs> um, like, hey, man, you're the, you're the, the, the uh, knowledge right here. So I think you'd be like, oh, right here. They're going to end off of this issue. You know, what's the name of the last episode? I could probably tell you if you tell us that. Yeah, it's, um, uh, it's yeah. What's the last? It's it's you know? some it's it, it something is extinction. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, it's it's very it's a very Magneto phrase. Um, do you think Magneto is going to revert back to being evil by the end of the season? Season. I hope not, because I really like. I do like a good Magneto. I've always liked Magneto as a good guy. Yeah. And as actually really cool because we were watching the episodes with my daughter. And like I was telling her, it's like he was a bad guy. And he decided that he didn't want to be a bad guy anymore. And the amount of conversation and thought that that has provoked for my four-year-old daughter yeah, exactly like, about like it, turning a new page, forgiveness, all that stuff. Yeah, singing a song in the back of my car a day later about how Ursula didn't want to be a bad guy anymore. <laughs> I'm like, wow, Ursula is still just bad from though. This conversation we had about Magneto <laughs> and how important it is to be able to change your mind. Like that's that's. Like, for some reason, we've lived in a society that thinks changing your mind is a bad idea when that's the exact opposite that shows that you're able to grow and learn and be a different person. And so teaching her about how Magneto grew and learned and become a different person uh, it has 
taught her about that concept, about the idea of changing your mind, about the idea of growth and redemption, and that we're getting all of that out of an X-Men cartoon is just makes me so happy. Let's see. Tolerance is Extinction is the name of the last three episodes of X-Men 97, parts one, two, and three. Wow. Did they already do God Loves, Man Kills in the uh, cartoons? No, I don't. I mean, it's it's always been kind of at the forefront, but never like the pastor. Because that sounds kind of, you know, like the oh, story. Yeah. But that story it's kind of like was. something that you're right. It's something the bad guys would say to the friends of humanity, the the racists in, in the. So they so they're going to be a continuing thing throughout this season. Oh, I mean, you can't do the X Men without racism. So absolutely, exactly. it's going to be a part of it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Mister Sinister, you think he's going to make a return appearance? Oh, absolutely, because. Or, well, then, yeah, because I, I hope that they go back to the Madeline stuff. I don't think they can walk away from it. I don't think that Scott should be walking away from it. Because yeah, because he's like, Jesus, I, I was just had, married to a whole other woman. I was married to a clone, and I just had to send my baby, my baby into clone. the future and say <laughs> goodbye to him forever, possibly. Like, and now I have this. Nah, dude. man, you're that, like the you're like yeah. the Punisher going out after that. Like he, <laughs> Scott will not, should not rest until he has sinister <laughs> head in a jar on his desk. What about um um the dude who runs his own planet? Where is a TV show? Mojo. Um, uh, Mojo. Yeah, you think he's gonna make an appearance? He already did in the old series. That's yeah, what I'm it, saying. You think he's gonna make a new one? I well, what do you not. think? What do you think the predictions are for the villains for the rest of the season? Mm. Oh, no, I think we are getting Mojo because of one of the episode titles. Oh, what's it called? Which one's that? Mo Tendo. Oh, okay. okay. So I think we're getting him there, and then that one's called Mo Tendo slash Life Death Part One. So that's where I think we're getting Storm's uh, Vision Quest. Wait. Does she get her repowering, or does she get repowered? I don't think she gets it there because there's an episode called Life Death Part Two, so maybe there. <laughs> um, but then I'm like, ooh, are they going to bring Cable back? Because Cable was in the cartoon, and they didn't mention that Cable was Cyclops' son, even though we all know that. I didn't, so thank you for, for like, fucking give me that. <laughs> so is that Nathan? Yeah. Cable oh. is Nathan. Yeah. See, look, yes. this, is, this is why I started all this, to learn new shit. And that's, so that that, makes, that's a whole buddy. fucking... Will they play along, play off of that? Wow, wow, okay. that's awesome. I hope they do, because I as feel well as I planted have, uh... too many seeds to not go back and kind of tend to some of the storytelling. <laughs> As you can see back behind here, Marvel's Capcom 2 playing in the background of my oh, arcade yeah. machine. Uh, Cable and Magneto. The yep, cheapest, yep, right there. Fight. The, the <laughs> cheapest assholes in that game. Yeah. That's yeah, like one of my favorite fighting games. That's oh, an man, original it's, game, too. As it should be. It's a great game. It is definitely a great game. You know? So, again, like, shit, I didn't know. Uh, Cable was Scott Summer and, and uh, Jean Grey's son. Didn't know that. Uh, not Jean's. Oh, wait. Oh, man. Really? Oh, yeah. Sure. And they played a lot, a lot of that in Krakoa, and I really liked it. And then kind of the main writer for Krakoa left, and they all just dropped it, which bummed me out and still bums me out. But, like, the Summers had a compound on the moon, and but in it were all of the kids that were his but like from alternate dimensions and stuff <laughs> so cable was cable could visit and stay in his own room on the moon and then rachel summers who is the phoenix who i don't think has been on the cartoon i don't remember her being on the cartoon but she was a major member of excalibur for a long time she was the the an important uh, piece of the Days of Future Past story, the original one in the comic book, and she was she's the child of Jean and Scott from the Days of Future Past universe, 
And so she had her room on the moon in the Summers compound. And then Cable had two rooms because there was young Cable and old Cable. And uh, Corsair, the, the space pirate who's his dad, had a room. And it was just, I love that stuff. I love the, the kind of family trees that get created o- over comic books because it's been... 60 years of storytelling they throw they gotta spice it up something it just keeps building and building into this this weird little family unit and but they never actually like hang out as a family and i'm like what you wouldn't hang out with your time traveling son like <laughs> talk to him and be like man how, how are you doing bud uh i remember you at five <laughs> <laughs> And so I just love that connectivity, and so I like seeing that, and that's probably why I want to see Cable in, in the com in the in the cartoon and have the show and be so, like, yeah, I'm Nathan. Yeah, right. So again, so Nathan is Cable, should be Cable. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I don't uh, change that. It's it's too important to to the. They action. shouldn't change that, right? So, and then one of the last episodes they are going to be doing with Mojo. Yep. Um, how do you think this season is going to end? Let's do some predictions here. I think they're going to have at least at least an ending. I, I think they'll have an ending, but then they will leave. Uh, there, w- there will be a classic Marvel cutscene where you see at the end the the seeds for the next season. Do you and- think any main? Uh- mainline X-Men characters are going to die? If they do, they've got Bishop and Cable right there to, to travel through time and kind of fix it, which they've done before. I don't think if anybody, they might kill Magneto because he's the older generation and, and they could leave it to the young kids. But I mean, it's a cartoon. It's kind of for kids. I don't think they would kill any of the main X-Men team. So, so do you think they're going to bring in any other characters, though? Because, again, Morph's, like, transforming all these characters. I'm like, where are the hell? Where the hell are I these I think characters? they're just doing that as a little a little wink and a nod and a nudge. But to- come on. Like, where is Psylocke? Where is, yeah. like, all like all these other characters, you know? I like- would love to see an Excalibur episode. Yeah. I would love to see X Factor spin out. Or, of- or do you think they're going to add any additional uh, Marvel storylines to this? Or do you think this is going to be a separate, uh, you know, X Men is just X Men universe? You know, you just think they're going to bring any other characters in? No, I don't think so. No, not, not yet. I mean, they did do an episode with Captain America in the original run, but it was a flashback. It was Wolverine during World War Two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do you think they're going to bring in like any of those? Characters? No, because they've only got ten episodes. Mm. Like, if they had announced it and it was like classic cartoon storytelling and there were 22 episodes in the season, then I could see them getting to a Spider-Man episode. But with only 10, that's not... The, like you said, man, this this stuff is going rapid fire right now. I don't think they've got the time to right, slow The next episode, easy. hey, who knows? We might see Iron Man, Spider-Man. <laughs> Four, like it's just all tossed into one, and then Hulk's gonna be there, like, you're like, what is going on in this episode? I know people are excited at the success of this, and if this might lead to a Spider-Man '99 or whatever it was. Oh, that'd be cool. So here you go. Let's uh, end all this segment off because I think we hit all the classic comics that these th- first three episodes are referencing. Um, let's hit. What do you think the next? continuation of this um how do you say re not even reboot uh continuation of these uh Marvel on, classic. yeah what? yeah like you said the new spider or a new spider-man continuation would be great, good i uh, mean i think the only one that was successful enough was spider-man what else would they have to build it's, on? it's strange that they started with x-men though i, mean, I felt like x-men was always the outlier you know I don't know, man. I lived it, man. X Men. I mean, I watched it as a kid, but I n- I never understood the concept of how big that series was. Oh man, when you know? that show started. Jeffrey, you sound like a war veteran. I lived I, it, man. No, I, but I did. <laughs> you did. Um, I know. 
And I mean, people, kids would figure out when they had to be up on Saturday morning to watch this show. And we would talk about the the episode for for the next five days until the weekend came again for the next episode to come out. I remember when they first showed the juggernaut in, in an episode and we and lost our shit. Like, mm-hmm. it, it was so much fun and it was such a huge thing. The X-Men cartoon was so huge. Like, the Spider-Man cartoon was really enjoyable and fun and good, but it wasn't the same as this X-Men. Like, um, if anything, I think over at DC would be more likely. Uh, I would love to see some more Batman the Animated Series. Or I'll Batman. just say the Batman Animated Series with... Um... He just passed away, like Kevin Conroy. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, that you, got the, you got the guy who did the voice of Batman in Brave and the Bold, Dietrich yeah. Bader, yeah. who also did Batman the, in the Harley Quinn show. Right, right. I love the Batman uh, Harley Quinn show as well as I love the Harley Quinn show on HBO. It's fucking great. Also, sadly canceled. So <laughs> we got what we got. Uh, you know, I uh, liked it we all. forgot to mention I'm doing a comic book with uh, Brad Raider from Batman Animated Series. Nice. Well, what yeah. the hell? Why didn't you announce that earlier? Uh, come I just on did. In. Uh, oh, Shadow wow. Paul <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, let's... Um, all right, so I think we wrapped up with our X-Men 97, you know, bit on the comics that cover the first three episodes. The next episode, we will talk about the rest of the episodes that released this month. So that'd be another three episodes we could talk about. Yeah. Wrap that up with another uh, what issues did what. Yeah. Um, sure. Any last minute things you guys want to talk about? Mike, again, you're just laying this on us right now when you should have laid this yeah, on us right earlier. Well, we announced it at WonderCon. We can talk about it next time because uh, we'll talk about it next time. Got it, got it. You, it's not going to come out before the next episode, so we could talk. But that's a little teaser. So okay. the two things I contributed today is there's going to be major comic news oh, that wait. doesn't involve me. Wait, we didn't talk about Shadow, though. No, we'll comic. talk about it next episode. Okay, got it. Got yeah. It. The next episode. Yeah, and I'll, I'll have more preview art and have them, I'll have a better idea of what I'm even doing. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Let's Let's do it then. Yeah, yeah, let's do it next time. Yeah, yeah. No problem, no problem. All right. I think uh, for this first episode, I think we got everything. Um, please, uh, if you enjoyed this episode, let us know in your comments, your predictions, the next few episodes of X-Men 97, your next issues that you're going to pick up this month, what you're excited for, what you thought was great, and what you didn't think was good. Please... Um, let us know. And again, this is uh, Shane of Over Display Gaming. And you got Jeff from Jeffrey's Comics. And then you got Mike down here. And his whole thing is Atomic Basement. Am I getting that correct, Mike? Yeah, we're going to be every night hanging out at Collector's Legion every Wednesday yes. from uh, six, 6 to 8, right? Yep, that's us. Every as well week. as in the uh, Santa Monica area. So if you're in Southern California, right. where's the uh, Santa Monica pickup? Uh, Santa Monica Brew Works. We hang out at a bar from uh, 5 to 8 on Tuesdays and talk about comic books. Yes. As well as, if you didn't know, I'm gathering a bunch of issues that I can toss together. And um, if you answer, if you ask some questions down below in the comments, uh, you'll be entered to win next episode. I will give you the first, uh, how, how many issues do we say? Were we giving the entire Energon issue? Uh, Energon series. Uh, it's just a, it's it. However much you want to give away. Um, yeah, um, what what makes the most sense to get started in that universe? Because I absolutely love this universe. I think maybe then the number one. So like Transformers one, Duke. Let's one, do the number four. ones then. Yes. Man. Got it. We will give the number one issues for uh, Void Rivals, um, Duke, Cobra Commander, and Void. Uh, no Transformers. Transformers. Yep. Four issues of comics. Please ask us a question below and you'll be entered to win those comics. Anyway, I thank you all for joining us and take it easy. Till next time, everybody. All right, bye, everybody.